All right, man, peace. It's Bronzeburg right here with another video. So, you know, it's funny that so many times we get into this conversation about music nowadays. I hear the, the whole entire thing about how it's like music nowadays is so whack and music is so this and music is so that. And, you know, my humbling opinion to hear in a lot of these conversations is that I stand back and listen most of the time because my opinion about the music industry today is that it doesn't surprise me. No, I don't like the music of today pretty much, but there's certain gems that I might pick up on, certain artists that I may like, certain beats that I may like, and I may, might be like, okay, I, I can listen to this. I can mess with this. You understand? And so there has been a rapper that came out and says argues that hip hop has been ravaged by culture vultures, in which we'll be reading this article together in which we'll have an in-depth conversation about his opinion and what do I think about his opinion in terms of hip-hop. Now, this being the digital age, we also have an understanding that hip-hop now is interfering with podcasts nowadays. Po podcasts nowadays is like the new radio. You know, back in the days, you know, you used to have to have a degree to go up on the radio and, you know, be someone who is speaking into the mic and have a disc jockey and all this other stuff. Now you don't have to do all that in the comfort of your own home, the comfort of your own phone. You can become a public figure by basically marketing yourself well and being able to speak on the topics that's popular, especially here on YouTube, which is, you know, a lot of times you'll see a lot of people start up their YouTube channel, get a mic and, you know, be able to surface around now what we call panels where you have up to 10 people via StreamYard or using any other type of medium to achieve that, where they have conversations about various topics, you know, and such as my algorithm, usually I'm seeing quote unquote red pill content or topics that's geared towards dating, but it's not the reason why I'm having this conversation today. You know, a lot of people always want to talk about how the youth of today is so programmed and, you know, they do this and they do that and blah, 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 blah. The powers that be, we must all understand is every generation is programmed, but it just so happens that Gen Z was programmed differently than how the millennial generation was programmed. And the same thing is going to happen with generation A once they become of that age, the age of when they're a teenager to when they're in their young 20s. You understand? So, you know, I may or may not do a video on this in the future where I'm going to be breaking down of how each generation was programmed. I may do that, but that's a story for a different day. But otherwise, I'm going to show you uh, my screen so we can have this conversation. So it says this. Bumpy Knuckles argues hip-hop has been ravaged by culture vultures. Bumpy Knuckles is not happy with the current state of hip-hop. Bumpy Knuckles, also known as Freddie Fox, says that culture vultures have milked, pimped, and ravaged hip-hop. In a statement shared on Instagram earlier this week, the Long Island rapper vented about the state of the genre. While doing so, he also promoted his 28 proje 2018 project, Pop Dukes, by sharing audio from the track Legends. There has always been a serious issue in Black culture of self-hate and the crabs in the barrel mentality. However, we all have had to study something or someone who helped to design who we are in, what we live and love to do. No, ma no matter how you articulate your feelings about our culture, there are levels and no one could or should never deny the fact that it's been milked, pimped and ravaged by culture vultures who have helped to keep us more divided in ideas and the outcome of those ideas, he said. And this is a picture of uh, Bumpy Knuckles from the set of Who's the Man, a famous movie that came out in 1993 that feature uh, Dr. Dre and Ed Lover that used to have the show on MTV. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, Y'all remember MTV Raps. They took it over from Feb 5 Freddy. Uh, in the early 90s, you know, before Feb 5 Freddy used to be the one that uh, ran MTV Raps. Because I believe MTV Raps came out in 1989, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, uh, Bumpy Knuckles continued. The young heads feel excluded and they are not talking about 50 
if some anything and the true OGs are again reminded that they are being pushed deeper into the backs of the minds of those new rappers and DJs. And then there is the middle aged 90s, 2000s rappers who are in a tug of war with getting money and keeping it in a buck with their forefathers about the history. Shit is fucked up that anyone would disrespect the architects of hip hop culture, no matter what we what we may my agree or disagree with. Bumpy Knuckles is far from the only veteran rapper to criticize the current state of hip hop. Earlier this week, Peak Rock also complained about the modern rap music. And the funny thing about Pete Rock is, if you ever watch his Instagrams, that brother will go in about the hip hop culture and even will have conversations about, you know, certain things that, you know, me and him might see eye to eye on about the state of this country or the world. You know, it's always amazing to look at Pete Rock's uh, Instagram account. In particular, he took issue with artists sampling music that he considers to be too recent or too mainstream. He explained on Twitter, that there's no digging for the hits anymore. And that's the end of that. But, um, you know, uh, that last part, you know, the funny thing about what I've seen with a lot of the today's music is that they sample samples, right? So, I mean, I understand that they use like drill beats and, you know, they, they use the drill beats to sample hits that was famous in the 2000s. And this is something I also want to bring to the table because this is something that I think about on my day to days when I'm outside, you know, um, even looking at YouTube about how uh, when it comes to the whole entire sampling thing that, you know, a lot of the hits that came from the 90s and 2000s that sampled probably a, a 70s record, they will sample that 90s record and then make that song new of 2023. And I, I mean, in my opinion, I think Gen Z don't even realize that they're replicating a lot of the 90s and 2000s era, even by fashion styles. I'm starting to see it in 2023. And I'm sitting back like, wow, their originality goes out the window. But as terms as talking about programming and talking about milked and pimped and by culture vulture, this is not a new argument. Now, I'm not trying to burst the bubbles of the opinions of someone like Pete Rock or Bumpy Knuckles. But in my opinion, the thing about it is, is that rap was always made to sell out okay now you may not like the direction of how it got sold out but it was always made to sell out okay i want to even take you back to the 80s where when it started going corporate who did they lean on and able to create this whole entire come one come all type of effect or what i would say you know uh forces coming together run dmc and aerosmith where they had the whole entire thing of walk this way of having rappers and a rock group coming together in order to order to formulate uh, a big hit song two forces coming together the rap style of the so-called black man and the rock style of a so-called white man joining in unison to promote uh the one the one the one uh, the one all come all together effect or it was something else that I was going to say but it escapes my mind right now but that was the whole entire point, right? Uh, the two forces coming together to form the one big impact. Then off of that, corporations took it upon themselves to look at rap as the new uh, thing that they could use to pitch and market their products. Such as so, they even used something like, uh, I remember back in the, the 80s, uh, you know, even watching the commercials, they use uh, Fred Flintstone and a Flintstone uh, franchise in order to promote uh, I believe cereal or promote something else. Uh, many products coming out in the 80s and 90s using rap as a form. And even before that, Feb Five Freddy was even one of the pioneers that decided to try to go corporate with the whole entire hip hop culture. You know, it was a lot of disagreements in the 80s where they was like, we don't want, you know, the mainstream media to really pick up on hip hop. They trying to gentrify it and basically stuff like that. You know, Fed Five Freddy in that movie. Even if you watch the movie, I believe uh, Beach Street, I, I believe it is. You've seen how you had a lot of the characters that used to be graffitiing on trains. Once they seen that random white girl coming along with Fab Five Freddy, they was mad. They was like, why is she here? Why, why are they here journaling the stuff that we do for a living as graffiti artists in this yard right now, graffitiing on a train? You know what I'm saying? So... The thing about this hip hop culture, it's been dead. You understand? 
another brother even sat there was mentioned about how when it came to the Dipset era, that, in his opinion, caused the whole entire thing about hip hop dying. And I mean, to the 2000s, now even thinking about it when I was younger, it makes sense that even in the 2000s, it started to get to that point of hip hop reportedly dying because all it was about was trying to up the profile of those rappers that wanted to make it big and strike rich. They had to go ahead and find a way of making money. So they figured, let's go out of me being a rap star and I'm going to model for these different clothing brands, or I'm going to go on this magazine cover, or I'm going to be able to pitch the next product so that you see my face on there. And that would inspire you to buy the product. So culture vultures was already, it was already something that was going to happen. This is not a new concept. And we already know that the Jays already had a, a big hand in it because this is something that most deaf talked about. Now, this is not a surprising thing when you think about the conversation. OK, but today's rap, obviously, it's dead. Obviously, uh, you know, even me hearing a lot of this music is dead. It's programmed. You understand? Absolutely. One hundred percent of the way over programmed, oversaturated, where to the point it doesn't even matter about you having skill. It's about how popular you are from not necessarily SoundCloud, maybe uh, Bandcamp, maybe Spotify, uh, other mediums that's using the forms of replacing albums replacing uh records that you had to dig in the crates for and everything is virtual and synthesizers taking over instruments given to the fact that people don't want to use instruments anymore to make music but that's just my thought take on it let me know what your uh, thoughts is in the comment section remember to like share subscribe peace